Spider-Man does whatever Spider-Man already Spider know how can. I feel about me from Spider-Man. Climbs on walls and sneaks up on me when I'm taking a piss. Hey, yo. He also does what That's a spider nuts. can't. There are no spiders that swing on their How's webs. Spider They're webs? too small to webs get any momentum. Teams. It's also impossible okay. for a man to do this. It's not safe. <laughs> the massive weight of the G-forces would rip off his arms. But in the movies, a man has that been is true. for over- But I, I think that's the problem with people comparing Spider-Man to like how a human body would react because he also has superhuman strength. So yes, a normal person with that G-force probably would dislocate his shoulder, but he is super duper strong. Like bro can lift a chair or a, a chair. <laughs> bro can lift a fucking bus, bro. 40 years. Other superheroes Bro, stop fly, the train. Rise, and run. Web slinging is one of the most unique and exciting methods of super transportation. A good web sling can be I love web and satisfying. An expression it just sucks of that you rely so heavily on something fun, to but attach it's to. It's difficult to get right. Even with multi-million dollar computer effects, it takes ingenuity to make it look real. Why do some web sling scenes feel liberating while others fall flat? How did they do it? When did they start doing it? Well, the first web slinging scene was done without CGI, practically. No way. Actually, I never In watched this one. The 77 CBS one? aired a pilot the for show? their new TV show, Spider-Man. In the 90 minute episode, I wanted to watch which it. bear in mind came out in 1977, how many web slinging scenes are there? <laughs> one. Oh, it's two. Damn, two? two. Actually, one, because it's right. an alternate angle of the same swing. A swing that'd be reused several times throughout the no show. No fucking the way. <laughs> reason for this recycling is because that's a real stunt. So doing it again would mean risking a man's life. CGI wasn't an option because at the time, the most realistic looking CG character was a rotating head. It would take another decade for a full computer generated character. Since they couldn't use VFX to make it look real, stunt coordinator Fred Waugh chose the obvious option. Have someone actually swing from building to building. After two days of rigging, Fred wore the costume himself and took the first swing. He said, hey man, I'm not gonna put nobody else's life at danger. I'll try it first. That's that's a real nigga right there. Oh my god, that shit is actually a real stunt. As impressive as that was, in the comics, Spider-Man usually swings more than once. Luckily, also with no CG and a low budget, across the world, the Japanese were doing it better. I forgot about the Japanese Spider-Man! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I forgot about this shit! Japanese Spider-Man has several Anyone other can wear modes the of transportation, including a motorbike, a spider car, a giant robot oh, mech, this or is the fire. including a motorbike, a spider car. Oh, this is sick! A giant robot mech, or his legs. But whenever he does web sling, you can't miss it. As he yells spider string before shooting spider his web. String. Spider string! What the- Spider string! And then the swing will be edited to repeat several times. <laughs> oh, the W man backflip in the suit is gymnast Hirofumi Koga. Most of Hirofumi, his you did your thing, my nigga. Low angle swoops above the camera, except for this one. What the heck? Which gave him several scars and bruises. That's not the most dangerous stunt in the show. Koga climbed all sorts of structures, often without a rope, including a moving car. Nuts. One time a stunt was too dangerous for even him, and he was swapped out for a more resilient stuntman, one that was two inches tall and made of plastic. The Japanese Spider-Man show delivers on comic book spectacle with handcrafted solutions. <laughs> as inventive or dangerous as the American and Japanese Spider-Man shows are- What the fuck was he doing on the back of his truck? As inventive or dangerous as the American- That boy was voguing on the back of his truck. Spider-Man shows are- 
These are practical stunts, so they can't match up to their comic counterpart without separating stunt doubles from their arms. It took two and a half decades to make it look real with every limb attached. CGI. I got a call. Oh me. Fucking Maguire. And they told me I was going to be directing the film, and I had no idea <gasps> how Sam I was Ray. ever going to bring off Ray. what I thought all the fans must have been expecting. This great aerial ballet, this graceful movement of Spider-Man. Sam, I'm not going to lie to you. To you made Manhattan, to the canyons, a masterpiece. It had to be done with great grace and For the agility. first two movies. The third one this is, I still like it because, you know, fluid and beautiful to look but it's, it's at. cinematically is not that good. A stunt man. It was mind-boggling how we were going to pull that off. How were we going to create this illusion? So that challenge was probably the biggest making the film. At this point, Sam Raimi had made a name for himself with inventive practical effects. <laughs> oh, that's fucking sick. Which Spider-Man still uses a lot of. But practical web slinging has a limit. To break past that limit, practical. a modern invention was needed. The computer. Servers. Despite radical technical advances in very few years, computer effects were still in Transformers. their infancy. CGI stunt doubles, or digi doubles, which Spider-Man needed to be, sucked. One of the first digi doubles was used in Jurassic Park. It's the lawyer who gets eaten by the T-Rex. No. A flawless effect, but hardly applicable to Spider-Man. For yeah. Titanic, motion capture was used to create hundreds of digi doubles populating the ship. They are convincing from a distance, but up close, they look like this. Spider-Man needed to be in your face. Luckily, Ray exactly. had a good team. John Dykstra was hired to supervise the visual effects. His resume included Silent Running, Star Wars, and Stuart Little. But his most relevant experience oh, was in- Stuart Little, bro. Stuart Little has some fire ass CGI in it. I can't even lie. Like I remember this one time I was watching it and um, I think it was a scene where he was put into the washing machine. I was like, yo, this shit looks Fucking crazy. The May included Silent Running, Star Wars, and Stuart Little. But his most relevant experience was in Batman Forever, where he and his team created a computer-generated Batman who swung past the frame, hung off a helicopter, and jumped off a building. Look oh, familiar? Three problems. These shots are at night, not completely convincing, That's and there's true. very few of them. The challenge of human character animation is that everybody in the world is an expert in human motion because that's what we see every single day and have been seeing for 300,000 years. We have to make that character incredible, but not unbelievable. To create the Digi Double, Toby Maguire and his hey. stunt double Chris Daniels had their bodies scanned into the computer to create duplicate models. The animators then studied how they both moved. But unfortunately, Toby Maguire can't do this. So the team used several references for the animation. Most okay. So I heard that one scene where he saves Mary Jane and she's like holding on to him while he's swinging. I heard that was a doll, but I don't know. Which aren't human, but see such if he as says it. spiders, cats, and that was Disney's a swinging Tarzan. Scene. The way Spider-Man swung really came down to the VFX artist's imaginations. A tedious trial and error process until it looked right. How does he have all this information? Tell like, is this public knowledge? There are a few practical swings, like when Peter first discovers his powers, accomplished with big cranes holding a track and wires. So this is a real stunt. Yes, sir. Toby did his thing. There is a lot of wire work in Spider-Man. Most of the stunt doubles are trained gymnasts, except for this guy, because this is not a guy. An added challenge is they not- I was right. I was right. That's literally a fucking doll. Except for this guy, because- Oh my god, that's literally a doll. This I was is right. not a guy. An added challenge is they not only needed Spider-Man to swing around, but a New York to put him in. To create virtual New York, they used texture mapping. Texture mapping means that they I took survey that. measurements of the positions of the buildings and photos to make a digital environment and then overlaid pictures of the buildings on top. They then added life to the city with CG cars, pedestrians, and birds. Spider-Man's final swing is the most complicated shot of the movie. Yeah, it took that shit seven is nuts. months to lock down the movements. The web seven slinging in this movie is this a pioneer scene? work of visual effects art, but it still doesn't look quite right. There is a surreal jerkiness to the digital yeah. character in some shots. He this looks obviously artificially was fake. sped up. Luckily, they tried a few it. more times. Shout out Spider-Man 2, my favorite version, my, my favorite out of the heights. Literally. out of this trilogy what we were missing to a certain degree was a little bit of the vertigo 
that it is to be Spider-Man because his world is not five stories up, it's not two stories up, it's 75 stories up. The visual effects are improved from the first in every way. Yes, the Digidouble sir. got better muscles, a better skeleton, and is more photoreal. The CG buildings were upgraded, and they started using the Spider-Cam more. Spider-Cam? Oh shit. The spider cam is a tripod, except it doesn't have legs and isn't on the ground. It's essentially a camera set up with wires Yo, they put this shit all the way through New York for real. The, the camera then moves along a predetermined path using winches. That way the shot can be anywhere in 3D space and move very fast. A CG Spider-Man can be composited into a real environment way up in the air and then shot at low frame rates to increase the sense of speed, just like this. Another Dude. key to making the web slinging look real is to make Spider-Man real as much as possible, cutting from a VFX Spidey swinging to a performer in a suit landing. What the actor can't do, a stuntman does, and what a stuntman can't do, the CG model does. Okay. During pre-production, storyboards identify what is CG and what is live action, either by drawings or animatics, which are crudely animated storyboards. Since the production plans these shots out early, the VFX can be better because the artists mm. have time. Spider-Man 3, oh, they had that a new ring challenge. Shit was so, How do you fake this had to be one of the most frustrating scenes to watch in all of this this trilogy, bro. All the nigga wanted to do was grab the ring and he just couldn't get it. That shit was pissing me off, bro. Web swinging without a mask on. In the previous films, we saw a lot of Spider-Man battling, but we obviously always got it at the end. But that's the just, it was just in the wing. Peter Parker. So I felt it was important in that this third Defoe film, talking? like in the comic books. That no, I it's read. not. To have Peter be involved in the battles. This is a visual effects nightmare got a raspy because voice, fabric a like is much easier to digitally replace than skin. A few different tricks that right there, everybody this. knew was super fake. Blue screen wire stunts. Toby's actually swinging now. With a blue screen behind him, he is elevated seven feet off the ground. Wires are attached to his torso and shoulders, and twisting his body to give him the back and forth web swinging motion. The second trick was straight out of Mission Impossible: face replacement technology. To scan a face, they put a a lot of reflective Sandman. markers on it to measure its topography. Then the actor would stand in a light stage. This crazy dome with hundreds of little lights simulating hundreds of different lighting w conditions picture. that could then be used on the CG models in any different lighting environment. Spider-Man 3 has a lot of editing within the frame. Instead of cutting from a digi-double to Toby, within the same shot, they'll switch between a Toby Maguire and a digi-double, which is noticeable in some shots. Yeah. I love the swinging in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies, but the limitations of early CG and supernatural camera work holds these scenes back for me. The storytelling and choreography is so good that those nitpicks don't really matter, Yeah. but I do think the swing got better. Oh man. Only three years passed I think between this the is end of the production of Spider-Man 3 and start of The Amazing Spider-Man. Yet I believe the web swinging is much more visceral, Web dynamic, swinging in this shit is fucking real. peak, Probably bro. I can't lie. That, that moon an scene? insane amount of footage of stuntmen swinging on cables. Whether or not they used any of it in the final cut doesn't really bro, matter. I would want to be a stuntman just to swing to the at least once This time the animation is very much inspired by human movement. Stuntmen and gymnasts were studied extensively. The main comic inspiration is Ultimate Spider-Man, drawn by Mark Bagley. His dynamic poses were incorporated in slow-mo This scene is ramps. just... Oh, this is absolute peak cinema right here, bruh. New camera angle. Oh my gosh, what a fucking cinematic scene, bruh. Both were added, including this awesome first-person point-of-view shot, this which shit was is such sick a too. simple solution for a more immersive swing. Stunt coordinator Andy Armstrong figured out a way to have a stuntman swing past the cars. Under Riverside Drive in Harlem, Spider-Man is going to be swinging, not unlike a trapeze artist, over cars and buses for real. First, they used a traveling winch rig. Yo, imagine to driving through the city and just seeing a nigga in a Spider-Man outfit bridge. swinging and then from they fucking also cables. They designed a spider swinging truck, which has a sort of human puppeteering rig on the back, so that the stuntman That's could cool. simulate swinging underneath the bridge. And all these cars are driven by stuntmen too. I don't know. This is definitely a controlled these shots set. Are amazing. But most of this the web swing scenes it. take place at night, an effective and overused way of hiding CGI. So does this Spidey hold up in the light of day? Mm. 
I believe that the opening of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is the pinnacle of web swinging. This Spider-Man yeah. has a small difference that, that makes... That boy literally is falling from the logo. The logo fades into the back of his suit and he's just falling. That shit was... Bro, I'm telling you. I think... I think the Amazing Spider-Man series is so overly hated for no reason bro all the difference well maybe not no they reason made i won't say it's amazing looser with an but added like it doesn't it doesn't suck as much as people think his it does movements and the turbulence of the wind around him but that's yes, not it the character animation is inventive spider-man barrel rolls through the air does aerial hairpin turns and transitions into slow-mo to hit poses out of comic panels mm. much like the comics where each muscle is distinct the muscle animation is realistic and still somewhat visible through the suit the silhouettes and volumes are animated to specific lighting conditions for each shot so that the contours of the sculpt are picked up in the specular areas of the render. Just like in the comic book artwork where the muscle shapes are so clearly and artistically defined in dramatic lighting. The camera work isn't artificially smooth but is handheld. How do you go handheld in a digital environment? With this motion control camera rig, which grounds impossible shots with human impulse. The cinematography is much more dynamic so as we're not always following Spider-Man in the air, but given shots from a pedestrian's point of view or this beautiful GoPro shot. The sound design gives this scene rhythm and immersion accented with web thwips and dramatic whooshes. Another small part of why this Spider-Man swings so much better is the actor's physique. Since Andrew Garfield is lankier, the ragdoll physics are more exaggerated. Mm. And then we then arrive with Disney Tom Disney makes a deal with Sony and Spider-Man has swung around in six MCU movies so far. Except he starts off by not swinging around too much. According to Steve Rollins, the animation supervisor for Captain America Civil War, we wanted to avoid imitating previous movie incarnations where the wall crawler is hitting all the comic book poses. It was about making him feel more real and awkward, mm. like a teenager. This extends to Spider-Man Homecoming, where Spider-Man still doesn't swing much, but instead hops around like a rabbit. An odd decision with the MCU Spider-Man is most every shot of Spider-Man in his suit is 100% CG. Even in the close-ups, that is a computer-generated man. Even if they made the costume and shot with it on set, they would cover it with CG. The rationale That's is stupid. that by going full CG, they can remove wrinkles and make costume design changes. But the lack of wrinkles makes them look too smooth. This shot from The Amazing Spider-Man is also 100% CG. But the MCU Spider-Man is missing one thing that The Amazing Spider-Man isn't. Folds, creases, and a goddamn looser suit. In Avengers Infinity War, he swings for a few shots, but it isn't until his last scene in Spider-Man Far From Home where he really starts to swing. Okay. They found a way to bring MJ along without being cucked by a mannequin. To shoot these shots, <laughs> they used a large blue screen, some big fans, and a wire rig to hold both Tom Holland and Zendaya. For New York, repurposed carpentry from the Avengers was used to build the CG buildings. Tom and Zendaya did some stunts on location for reference, but these shots are all CG. Well, it doesn't compare to the amazing movies, I'm a fan of this scene. I like the okay. varying compositions and visual gags, but the tightness of the suit and lack of comic book poses holds it back. No Way Home, bruh. Even what a in sad No Way movie. Home, with the return of Toby and Andrew, the swinging isn't quite right. The character animation is exceptional, with each Spider-Man retaining their unique swinging behavior from the previous movies. The suits are too tight, and the landings can be bouncy. The mm -hmm. final swing is rough. The movement, yeah. especially on this slide, looks. I mean, it's cool, but I was the like, the deterioration of the swing isn't necessarily the fault of the VFX artists, who were locked into using a specific Spider-Man design without a loose suit. Good VFX take time, so Marvel Studios' breakneck release schedule could be to blame. Ah, ew, bro. I don't even want to see this, bro. I didn't watch this. Before quitting the infamous Spider-Man Lotus movie, this VFX team created this beautiful web swing scene. <laughs> Not that I would ever watch this. photography and Google Maps Street View I should, of New York but... was used to create the environment. The suit model is incredibly detailed with scratches and wrinkles and the character animation is expertly staged. Fire. 
Along with this, Fire there are some Can't excellent lie. fan-made animations that capture web swinging better than most of the movies. That's because digital effects are an art form, one that takes work and creativity. The reason why this looks better than this is because inspired choices by human beings were made. In the words of John Dykstra, The computer is a tool. It's like a hammer. It doesn't by itself know how to build a house until someone puts their hand to it. Hopefully the next Spider-Man movie uses lessons from the past to create tactile and memorable web-swinging scenes. A looser suit, dramatic sound design, comic book poses, focus on realism, creative character animation, triumphant score, it's all in this scene. All showing and if they amazing learn a lesson from even further back, instead of losing hundreds of millions of dollars, risk losing a few stuntmen instead. I like this. That's, that's actually kind of fire.